So in this lesson, we're going to wrap up the three families and talk about the quadratic functions. Um, first off, let's see how they appeared in the sequences unit. These were the ones that were neither arithmetic or geometric, and we just called them quadratic uh, because there's really other nothing else to call them. And uh, just like the other sequences, these guys have domains, or all sequences have domains, that are just the set of natural numbers, meaning one, two, three, four, not even a zero, just uh, the natural numbers. And instead of having a common difference or a common ratio, these were special in that they had a common or constant second difference. So it wasn't the first set of differences between the terms that was the same, it was the second set of differences that was always the same. And we spent uh, time writing recursive rules, but remember, I only made you write them in sentence format, and I never had you guys write the apparent formula for these because they're a little bit more challenging, and we don't actually do that until towards the end of the year. Now, when we do big graphs, let's remember what we uh, learned from big graphs. So first, we learned that the parent function of all of the quadratics was the equation y equals x squared because y equals x squared is the most basic equation that will generate this shape uh, that a quadratic has, and we learned that the name of this shape of the quadratic functions is called a parabola. And a parabola was that smooth U-shaped curve, and it could either open up and have a minimum, like a happy face, or it can open downwards and have a maximum, like a frowny face. And those were the two types of parabolas that we looked at for quadratic functions. And they have to either open up or open down. If I have a parabola that opens sideways, it's not a function because it would not pass the vertical line test. And then with big graphs, we looked at the equations and we noticed that the equations all contained some x squared. Or when you multiplied them out, it contained an x squared. So we had equations that looked in general like this, or we had equations that looked like this, where we had the number uh, being subtracted from x in parentheses, we had some other number potentially added outside, and some other number multiplied. So these types of equations will generate the needed parabola. And then when we talked about functions in general, and we talked about finding domains and ranges, Remember, these functions, just like the linear and the exponential, will have domains that are all reals, because if I look at either of these two equations, I can plug in any real number and square it, and I can plug in any real number and add it, uh, add it, add, multiply it by a constant, and then I can add them all together. That's always going to work. But the ranges, remember, depended on whether you had a parabola with a minimum or one with a maximum. And so if you had a parabola with a min, meaning it was the happy face variety, then you knew that the range is y is greater than or equal to that minimum value, which meant you could have the minimum value, it's just, um, so that means you could have, be, have an or equal to, unlike the exponentials which had the strictly greater than. And then we have the functions that had the maximum value, which are the frowny face parabolas, and their ranges were y is less than or equal to the maximum. Because you have some maximum value on your parabola, and the range values range from, go from that maximum value all the way down to negative infinity. And then we talked about transformations, and I'm going to use a separate piece for this. We talked about the transformations of the quadratics. And so we'll start off with some linear Oh, not linear, whoopsie, quadratic, my bad. Quadratic f of x. So I have some quadratic function f of x, and if I want to move it up or down, I do the exact same thing I did with every other function I wanted to move up or down. I added some constant to f of x. So I can add like a 4 to it and move the entire parabola up. If I like subtracted 7 from it, it would move the entire parabola down. And then if I wanted to do a left or right shift, I did the exact same thing I did with all the other functions and replace x with some number, x minus some number. So if I said like, um, so for example, if I said y equals, you know, x minus 4 quantity squared, 
that's going to shift it to the right four units because I subtracted off four, which moved the zero to the four. So remember that has to be, you know, inside the parentheses uh, and squared in order to do that left-right shift. And then I had to think about whether I had a happy or a sad parabola, which meant a reflection through the x-axis. So that's going to be negative f of x. Now, whether it's happy or sad depends on what f of x is. If the original parabola is already opens upwards and is a happy parabola and has a minimum, then I know multiplying it by the rule by negative 1 is going to flip the entire parabola upside down and make it frowny face. If it was already frowny face and I perform this transformation, it's going to make it happy face. And then the last thing we talked about with transformations was the width of the parabola whether it was a skinnier or wider or a, a wider parabola. And that transformation takes uh, some constant a, some non-zero constant a, and you multiply it by f of x. And to make my parabola wider than the f of x function, I would need an a value, or the absolute value of the a value, to be between 0 and 1. Because to make it wider, what I have to do is I have to shrink all the y values down. And the only way to shrink the y values down is to multiply it by some fraction. Um, remember, the sign tells you whether um, I'm going to flip it through the x-axis or not. So that's why we have to put it in absolute value. And then if I want a thinner parabola, the absolute value of a has to be greater than 1. So I'm trying to get the y values to grow up faster. So I have to multiply it by a constant that's greater than 1, like a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or something to like that, and that's going to make my parabola thinner. So to recap everything we know about quadratics so far, we know their sequences were quadratic. We did not have to write apparent formulas for them. Their recursive rules had that add the consecutive whatever we were adding, and which generated the constant second difference. In the big graphs, we learned that the parent function is y equals x squared. We learned that the graphs were called parabolas, and they either had a minimum or a maximum meaning happy face or frowny face. Their equations contained an x squared, and they either looked like y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, if they were all simplified out, or we had them with a parentheses, x minus h quantity squared. And this had to do with the transformations. And then we talked about uh, domain and range. The domain of all quadratic functions is all reals. And then the range depended on whether I had a happy face parabola with a minimum or a frowny face parabola with a maximum. And the ones with the minimum, y was greater than or equal to that minimum value. And if with the maximum, is y is less than or equal to the maximum value. And then looking at transformations, to move them up, I add something to the rule. To move it down, I subtract something from the rule. If I want to shift it left or right, then wherever the x is in the rule, I have to replace it with an x minus c. That will move it to the right c. If I want it to be moving to the left, I have to add the c value. And then reflection through the x-axis is to take the rule and multiply the entire rule by a negative 1. And that's going to flip it either upside down or right side up, depending on its original orientation. And then finally, if I want to affect the width of the parabola, I have to multiply the function rule by a non-zero constant. Um, if I want it to be a wider parabola, then the number I multiply it by has to be between 0 and 1. Remember, we ignore the sign because the sign is the reflection. And then if I want it thinner, I have to multiply it by something greater than 1. And that's all we know about quadratics.